Amen. 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 Salvation has been brought down. We ought to go tell it. Tell it. Now, you know, if we had a good thing, if we wanted to let others know, we don't mind telling it. Sometimes we tell things we have no business telling. Well, but when it comes to the salvation from above, we ought to be willing to share it and tell it. This song is very uh, important to us, uh, especially since uh, we're going to be going into our uh, gospel revival meeting next week. But in order for our gospel revival meeting to be successful, we're going to have to be committed to coming to the services. Now, I have to say that because some of us we're only going to see once. Some we're not going to see nuts. <laughs> but I'm hoping that we'll see all of you on a regular basis. It starts on Sunday, only goes through Thursday, and that's about five days of service. Right. And I'm asking you, can't we make a commitment? Yes. Can't we decide today that we will be there? that we will be a part of it every night at 7 o'clock. And we move the time to 7 to accommodate us. You know, we used to be 7.30 for others to come in, but uh, we decided, hey, let's make it better for us. If we can be here on time and be ready to come together, I talked to the minister. He's going to be here, and he's looking forward to coming, very excited, and I, I'm looking forward to it. And uh, uh, let's get together, and let's bring in visitors. If nothing else, bring yourself, because the Word of God, salvation, uh, is very important, not only to those outside, but to us, but to us, and how we need to revive ourselves, and sometimes we just need to get ourselves fired up a little bit. Now, I don't know about you, but I'm getting fired up, and I, it ain't even got here yet. We need to start getting ready to think about the gospel of Christ Jesus, and how it affects individuals, and how we need to bring some folk. You know somebody, you know somebody that could benefit from hearing the testimony of the scripture and knows that you know somebody that needs to know how to change their life. So we were talking last week, and we're going to continue to talk. We're talking uh, from James chapter 1, uh, verses 26 and 27. And um, very simple scripture, very, uh, we've read it many times before. But turn, turn there, or look on the screen. James chapter 1, 26 through 27. I'm only reading it just to emphasize a couple of things. If any man among you seem to be religious, and I like that part, seem to be religious, but bridleth not his tongue, but deceiveth his own heart, this man's religion is vain. Mm -hmm. Pure religion and undefiled before God and the Father is this, to visit the fatherless and widows in their affliction and keep himself unspotted from the world. Mm -hmm. So we understood and we talked about this a little bit last week, pure religion. Understanding that Pure and undefiled, religion is what God requires. And I think it, it, it's, it's in sharp contrast to anything that's done by ritual or uh, by actions that do not erupt from a spiritual place. Some people just do things because that's what they've always done. Some people do things because that's what they think uh, is uh, it, it's the deed and actions better than the person's intent of the heart. Uh, but if we're understanding that pure and undefiled religion is the type that God blesses and that God wants 
from the pure, honest believer. You see, a pure and lasting religion in the sight of the Father means you care for other people. Orphans and widows are written here because they are the ones who can't take care of themselves. Orphans have no parents or family. Widows, had, at that point, widows who, uh, 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 whose husband had died had no support mm -hmm. and no financial means. And so they were on the uh, uh, rolls of the church and those that needed to help them. He said, now, if you want to be, if you want to practice pure religion, then you ought to be willing to help somebody, especially the needy these individuals who are needy. But if you just help the needy, but you don't take care of your own home or your own spiritual presence, it says keep yourself unspotted from the world. And we began to think about that, how the world and its complications continually stain us and continue to mess with us and keep us from being the kind of spiritual people that we need to be. I think I said something about that we have good intentions and we want to be good and we want to do what's right. But sometimes it's just hard for us to find the way to do it all the time. We looked at Jeremiah chapter 6 verse 16 through 17 and we talked about the old way the good way, the old path. Yes, and we said that that's something we need to try to find out. In that particular passage it says, stand ye in the ways and see, and ask for the old path. Where is the good way? And walk therein. Yes, so you know what, I guess that's what we're trying to find out today. We're still trying to find out what is that good way? What is the old way? I mentioned last week the song that gave me the uh, encouragement along with my wife for this lesson. Because she was saying to me, you know, we have forgotten what we used to know. And we've forgotten what we used to be. And when you have forgot what you used to know and what you used to be, then you don't really know who you are anymore. So the church has forgotten what they used to know. Forgotten who they used to be. Then the church of Christ is not what it should be anymore. So we want to talk about the old time way. The good way. So we want to use again for our title Give Me That Old Time religion. <laughs> give me. When I started looking that up, I could not find give me that old time, but I could find gimme. <laughs> I was trying to find give me. I said, I can't find it. I, I found gimme. Give me that old time religion. Then I can find it in my search. And so uh, we want to say, give me that old time religion. All right. Pure religion, undefiled before God and the Father. Religion pure, holding true to the word of God. A pure religion that causes people to separate themselves from the world and their fleshly desires. Give me that old time religion, that one that I want to stand and say, where is that good way? Where is the way? I want that old time religion that lasts forever, right. built and predicated uh, on Jesus Christ that lasts forever. Right. Jesus Christ in Hebrews 13 and 8, Jesus Christ is the same what? Yes. Yes. Yesterday, today, today right. and forever. So I want the religion that is predicated on Jesus Christ himself. Right. So we review a few things. We we're going to review a few things. I said we need some Old time preaching and teaching. Right. Romans chapter 10, verse 14. 1 Corinthians 1, 18. That's what we talked about last week. We just, I'm just bringing it back so you can remember. 
But I also, we talked a little bit about we don't need another Bible. And I asked him, why do we choose the Bible? Because it convicts, converts, corrects, and cleanses. And we don't need another book to understand the book. And we don't need help to understand the Bible. Now, I don't, I'm not against getting help. But we need to go back to the book. We even talked a little bit about uh, searches. Somebody, uh, somebody was sitting over here and knew all about the, the internet and the uh, Encarta and the this and the that. But we don't need all those helps just to understand the Bible. We don't necessarily need commentaries. We finalize with John 5, 39, search the scriptures. For in them you think you have eternal life, but they are they which what? Testify of me. If you want to know about Jesus, you're going to search the scriptures. And then we, we, went, we were talking about, give me some of that old time preaching on sin, hell, and heaven. And we don't want to talk about the negativity. We talked about Luke 13 and 3 and verse 5. We talked about Paul's understanding about sin. Romans 3, 23, Romans 5 and 12, all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. And we understand that sin, if unchecked, sin, if not stopped, sin, if allowed to continue to grow, will lead us to spiritual death. Right. Romans 6 and verse number 23. Yeah. So we come to our next section. We didn't get to that last week, so the minister kindly stopped. Yeah. Well, give me some of that old time praying. We need old time dedication to prayer. Amen. Now, Brother John, too, when we say prayer meeting, folks think that means vacation. That means, uh oh, we don't have to go. That's optional. Optional. I don't get you. I don't get your understanding that we need to pray to God continually. And we need to not only understand, we understand, we need to understand power in prayer. Many of us are unspiritual when we don't understand the power of communicating with God. The power of prayer. And I just think somehow we just take it for granted. And we only think about calling on God when we need him. And I'm telling you right now, you call on him only when you need him. And one day he won't hear you. He'll hear you, but he won't answer. That's right, right. But we need to understand there is power in prayer. Amen. Turn to Mark chapter 9, 28 and 29. We're going to read that in just a second. Yeah. And I, I, I chose this passage because I want you to understand there's power in praying. Mark chapter 9, 28 to 29, what does it say? Afterward. Afterwards, when Jesus was alone in the house with his disciples, when he was alone in the house with the disciples, they asked him, they asked him why could we cast out the evil spirit? Why couldn't, why couldn't we cast, out the, cast out the evil spirit? How come we couldn't do it? Mm -hmm. And Jesus replied, this kind can be cast out only by prayer. Some things you're going to have to have to pray about. Yeah. You see, you know, I, I went back and reread that whole passage. A man brought his son to the disciples to get an unwanted spirit removed. And the disciples, through their bungling, could not do it. This man complained to Christ. Look, you claim to be the Messiah. You claim to be powerful. You claim these folk follow you. But they couldn't get the spirit from this boy. So Jesus exercised the spirit from the boy. Then the disciples wondered why they couldn't cast out the devil or evil spirit. 
And Jesus indicated that the gift to get rid of this exercises self-control through fervent prayer. Mm -hmm. He's telling them something. You not only got to claim to be religious, claim to be a servant, claim to be a follower, but you have to be in total, constant communication with the divine power, and that's God. And that's the problem with us. We don't connect up with the power of God. We only call on God when we get trouble. When things are, I guarantee you, when things ain't going right, you're going to holler, God, why help me? But instead of connecting up on a continual basis with God through prayer, that's why you're going to be able to get through a lot of these issues. I guarantee you there's a whole lot of issues that you're only going to get through by prayer. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Yes. Tell you one thing, being dead broke, <laughs> you ain't going to get through it sometime without praying. Now see, y'all ain't been dead broke in a while. <laughs> see, y'all ain't been dead broke in a long, y'all living real good. Hey, that is wonderful, isn't it? <laughs> but some of you who can testify with me yes, can remember when you were dead broke. Let me, let me just say, when you're dead broke, there's no money in your pockets, no money in your couch, <laughs> no money in the, between the seats of the car. <laughs> no bottles to cash in. Oh, yo, you, you've, been, you've been dead broke? When you're dead broke, there's no money coming in and none, and there's nowhere you can find none. I'll tell you nothing about being dead broke. When you're dead broke, folk don't want to see you coming. <laughs> they don't. I know I stumbled through the wayfaring alleys of, of Abilene looking for something and folks would see you coming and they just shut the door. <laughs> Here you are, you hear them in there. <laughs> You're knocking on the door, they, <laughs> they don't even want to deal with you when your dad broke. And I'm telling you right now, there's some things, I don't care what it is, physical illness, Physical illness, only prayer is going to help you get through that. Amen. Do you understand what I'm saying? Yes. Dealing with senility and folk who are ill and just irrational. Because when you're sick, you're irrational. Anybody been in a lot of pain around here? All right, okay. If you've been in pain, raise your, raise your hand. All right, Lord. If you had to live with somebody in pain, raise your hand. Now, are they irrational? <laughs> you ain't never lived with anybody in pain. That's terrible. <laughs> now, I wouldn't know that personally because I'm the one in the pain. Yeah, that's my wife about that. <laughs> but I understand because we don't always do what we're supposed to do. And sometimes the only thing we can do is pray. Amen. Some things you only get alleviated through what? Prayer. Right. And we don't pray enough in the church. Old time religion requires prayer. We need to be praying about everything we do around here. Whatever it is, we need to pray about it. Even if it's, if it's giving. We need to pray about that. About giving to God. God gives to you. And he gives you, he gives you so much, you don't know what to do with it. But yeah, when it comes back to giving back to him, you don't even have the spiritual mind to say, God, how much can I give? God, how much can I do go without? Because if I give all of this, I know you got me. Yes. Oh, you don't want to hear this today, I know, because it doesn't, but we need the old time praying. Right, sir. That's right. Old time praying today. You see, power is in prayer. Yes, sir. Power is in prayer. When you read in the Bible, biblical people, Faithful people in the Bible prayed to God. Mm -hmm. Moses cried to God and God spared Israel from Pharaoh in Exodus the 14th chapter. Not only when faced 
with annihilation at the Red Sea. They were crying out about, why did you bring us here to die? God said, what are you arguing and what are you hollering about? Move forward. These same folk you see today, you will never see again. Why? Because there's power in the prayer to God today. Joshua, when they needed him, the, the sun to stand still, Joshua prayed. In Joshua chapter 10, verses 12 through 14, and the sun stood in the sky until the things needed to be accomplished. Why? Because when you pray to God, things happen. Amen. Hannah wanted a child so bad in 1 Samuel 1 that she couldn't hardly utter the words, but she was praying, and when they saw the word, the song praying, they asked what it was. She was just asking for a son. Right. And God delivered her a baby boy Amen. that she gave back to him. Yes. Solomon, when blessed by God, and was asked to, to give him anything that he wanted. God asked for wisdom, Solomon asked for wisdom in his prayer. Amen. First Kings 3 and verse number 9. He said, give me wisdom to be able to understand and to rule over your people. Amen. That's right. And it was Elijah. Amen. Good old Elijah. First Kings chapter 18 stood up against the fire, the, the prophets of Baal. Okay. And he stood up against them. And they were all there cutting and trying to conjure up their God. And he put an altar together and he dug around it and put all the water on it and around it. And then what did he do? Pray to God. Pray to God in 1 Kings chapter 18. And God devoured up the sacrifice on, and before Mount Carmel. So what am I trying to say? Prayer is powerful today. Prayer has been used by all church leaders and folk that have come before us. And when we're dead in our graves, these children that are here right now will have to continue to pray to God for their deliverance. We need to get prayer back to the church. We need prayer back in the church. You know what? I don't care if it ever gets back in the school, but we sure enough need to get it back in the church. And we need to get prayer back into our personal lives. All of God's people need to come down to the altar and pray. Mm -hmm. 1 Thessalonians 5, 17, it says what? Pray without ceasing. Pray without ceasing. Mm -hmm. And I'm saying we need to pray more. Pray more. Mm -hmm. See, a lot of us like to beg for more. Let's pray for something. Right. Let's pray to God for more of his richness, more of his grace, more of his help, of his helping hand. Let's pray for the divine nature of God to make us better than what we were before. Because you know what I'm saying? I know we got needs. We got needs. Let's pray for the souls of lost family and friends. Let's pray for conviction of sin that's in our life and dominates us. Let's pray for solutions of our problems. Let's pray for the preacher and the teachers of the faith. When you come down praying to God, we need to metaphorically get on our knees, humble ourselves, and some of you need to get on your knees. I think I'm way beyond getting on my knees like a show lay prostate. <laughs> Try to tell God, I'm trying to demonstrate to the Lord I mean business when I'm asking him for his help. Turn with me to 2 Chronicles 7, 14. The brother has it there. We're going to read the second. You see, I need to let God know. I need God to know that I'm serious about what I'm trying to do for him. You know, what we do, we, we bellyache too much. Yeah, we always bellyache because it's not like we want it to be. I don't know about you. I, 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 I can't say about you, but I don't have enough of everything that I want to say I'm satisfied, but I, have, I can say this, that I got enough to be content. Yes, Do you hear what I'm saying? Because yes. God allows me contentment, even though I'm angry because I got to go through so much stuff. I'm still thankful for God. Yes. But I want God to know I'm serious. Yes. 
I want God to know I'm serious yes, about what he's doing for me. What does that Bible say, brother? If my people, if, if my people, which are called by my name, well, see, yes. uh -huh. yeah, now, 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 if my people, yes. this God's folk, right. called by God's name, yes, if my people called by my name shall humble themselves, shall humble themselves and pray. You see, that's the problem. Too arrogant, yes. too rude, too snooty, too snotty, too, uh, you think it's better than other folk uh, to pray to God. Yes, if you would just humble yourself and do what? And pray. Wait a second here. You humble yourself and pray. Yeah. If my people, called by my name, would humble themselves and pray, and read, seek my face, and seek my face, and turn from there with your ways, that's the problem. Yeah. I don't mind being his people. I don't be in mind occasionally being called by his name. I don't even mind occasionally having a little bit of humility. I don't even mind doing a little bit of praying. I don't even mind seeking his face. Uh -huh. But this next thing is where I got a problem. Uh -huh. What is it? And turn from their wicked ways. That's where my problem is. That's where my problem is. I'm egotistical, egocentric, lying, and I love my old evil ways. Uh -huh. Like to back talk and sass and tell lies. I got some problems I like to steal and I like to rob and, and murder folks of character assassination. I got issues. Well, yeah. I got issues. Yes, I got to turn from my evil. I like to steal from God. Mm -hmm. Why? You say don't do that? What does Malachi say in Malachi 3? Will a man rob God? Yes, yes he will. Yeah. So, yes, then, I got. I don't want to change my evil ways. Evil ways. Anything else there? Then when I hear from heaven, he said, if you turn from your evil ways, yeah. then God says, I will hear from where? From heaven. From heaven. And will forgive their sin. And I'll forgive your sin. And will heal their land. You wonder why God don't hear you? Uh -oh. Wonder why you're crying out? And God don't hear you? You haven't changed. You have not changed. You haven't turned from your evil ways. You're not seeking His face. You're not praying. You're not doing what you're supposed to do. And you wonder why God don't hear you. Sometimes it's not so much God hearing you, but hearing your good mother or your good grandmother praying for you because you ain't doing nothing. So He's He's blessing you through them. But when grandmother can no longer pray, and mother can no longer pray for you. What's going to happen to you? All I'm saying, we need to have some old time praying. Yep. We need some old time priorities too. Get back to the old time priority, what used to be right. God be right. God is true and every man alive is what Paul, is what Paul said. Yeah. Uh, you know, because that's what we need to do. We need, we need to make sure. Yeah. The old time priorities, mm -hmm. when a man put God first, in his life. When a woman did that as well. When a man's word was binding. Yeah. You say you're going to do something, you do it. Amen. When a man's priority was to serve God. The first priority of every human being should be to take care of his own life eternally. Why should a person be concerned? You may ask about a few years uh, down here, this opportunity to sustain life forever. See, uh, when you think about it, you got 70, 80, 90 years, 100, whatever you got here, but you have an eternity with God. Yeah. Why seek the things that only sustain you for temporary, just a few brief moments, and then invalidate what can help you for your eternity? Why should you not seek first and sustain that thing that lasts and lasts and lasts. You know, priorities, they translate into proper actions. And I want to be remembered as a person that has a good set of spiritual priorities. 
And I said, I want to live by those priorities. I want to live today in the light of eternity. And if it does, if, if what I do today does not or reflects badly on my eternity, I need to change. I need to change. And I need to get it right. I cannot continue to drift in any direction, one way or another, that takes me away from God. Mm -hmm. Jesus said in Matthew 6, verse 33, Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, mm -hmm. and all these things shall be added unto you. Yeah. 2 Corinthians 5, 9. Brother, read it. So whether we are at home or uh -huh. away, uh -huh. we make it our aim to please him. It doesn't matter where we're at, even on vacation. It says home or away, I don't know what that actually means, but even on vacation. <laughs> away from home, we're in the workforce. At the grocery store, wherever we are, we need to make it our aim to please God. Philippians 1, 21, what does it say? For to me to live is Christ, uh -huh. and to die is gain. Whatever I do, I need to do it to please God. Amen. Now, I don't know. I know that sometimes I, I mess up and I don't do it right. But I tell you, more times, I, well, let's say this. A majority of the time, I got to get it right. <laughs> then I hope that when I'm doing it right, God will catch me right. Do you understand what I'm saying? Because while I'm on the ebb and flow of right and wrong, I hope that when God comes back, I'm on the up swing. You hear what I'm saying? Yeah. Doing it right. Seeking God and seeking his kingdom. So that finally leads me to my last part, of which I won't get to all of it, but give me that old time gospel. Amen. Give me the old time religion, because the old time religion is the gospel. Why the old time gospel? What's wrong with today's gospel or good news or whatever? Why? You know, it seems that people are always going to try to distort what God wants us to do. Galatians chapter 1, verse number 6. I marvel that ye are so soon removed uh -huh. from him that called you into the grace of Christ unto another gospel. Yeah. There are other ideas and uh, other religious factions. There's all the ways to do things and folks are starting to move toward that. Mm -hmm. He said, I'm surprised. He said, I'm marvel. I'm surprised. So soon. Mm -hmm. I don't know how soon that was. Yeah. He said, you already drifted away. And I think about that, you know. These Galatians, you know, they removed themselves from the truth to another altered gospel, unfamiliar with the teachings of Jesus Christ. And sadly, most Christians today, following after men, preachers, leaders, and false teaching and false preaching, because they don't understand, they have come, they have come not to worship God, but to uh, be worshiped or enjoy worship for themselves. They have proclaimed themselves prophets and apostles that live by their wisdom and directed by their own greed. 2 Timothy 4, 3 through 4, New Living Translation. For a time is coming where people will no longer listen to right teaching. And I'm afraid. I'm afraid that time is now. Oh, yeah. I'm afraid that time is now. The time is coming. People will no longer listen to right teaching. They will follow their own desires. Following their own desires. They will look for teachers who will tell them what they want to hear. Yeah, there's some folk that are there for their own enrichment. Mm -hmm. Tell them what they want to hear. They will reject the truth and uh, follow strange myths. You know, a lot of folk in the church following things that are just contrary and strange mm -hmm. to the church of Christ. Yeah. Because they're following after these so-called demigod religious folk, theological, theological, excuse me, theological giants of the faith, 
but they basically are nanos of the faith yes, sir. because they don't have enough faith to understand you can't change yes, what God yes. have written. Yes, right. Yeah, even Pilate understood that when I've written, it's written. You know, you can't change what the Bible says. Yes, but these theological giants, they think they can tell you, we can do this and that now. And I'm telling you right now, you better watch out for those folk mm -hmm. that are massaging what you want and what you think, just so you be happy. Mm -hmm. I'll tell you one thing, the only thing I'm happy about is the old time gospel. Amen. The old time religion, the old time way. And that's all I'm happy about. I'm happy if we're doing what God says for us to do. Yes, that's what I'm happy. And not any other way and any other reason. The old time gospel is what worked. It's when people were baptized, how they were added to the church, yeah. placed in a safe condition. It was an old time gospel that keep folk humble, made people stay holy, and gave glory to God for all things. Yeah. Jeremiah said in Jeremiah 6, Let's verse 16, Thus saith the Lord. Stand ye in the way. Stand ye in the way. And see. And see. And ask for the old past. I'm looking for that old time gospel. Yeah. Yeah. Looking for that old time past. Pa path. You know why? Old time religion is predicated on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Yeah. Old time religion is predicated on the gospel of Jesus Christ. Right. In Mark 16, 15 and 16, Go into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. He that believeth and is baptized shall be saved. He that believeth not shall be damned. And I'm telling you right now, folks just don't want to hear that gospel. Jesus makes reference to the gospel, commanding his disciples to preach it to every creature. He offers salvation to all that accept it on those terms. In Romans chapter 1, 16 through 17, Paul said, For I am not ashamed of the gospel of Christ. For what? It is the what? Power of God unto what? Salvation. Everyone that believeth to the Jew first and also to the Greek. I'm just trying to say, you know what? Paul makes reference. I'm not ashamed of the gospel. The gospel is the power. Jesus wanted everybody to hear the gospel. He want everybody to have the opportunity for this type of power. Yes, gospel, good news, the good news of salvation through Christ Jesus. Yes, it's time for us to proclaim God's grace offered through Jesus, through the gospel of the word of God. In 1 Peter 4, 17, what does it say? For the time has come. The time is come. Is come. That judgment must begin at the house of God. It will begin at the house of God. And if it first begins at us. Okay, then guess what? We the first ones up. Yeah. We the first ones up. When the time comes, we will be the first ones. It will begin with us. Now, if it begins with us. What shall the end be of them that obey not the gospel of God? If you haven't obeyed the gospel, what's your, what's your end going to be? What's your end going to be? 1 Thessalonians 1, 8 through 9 should be on the board. In flaming fire, taking vengeance on them that know not God, uh -huh. and that obey not the gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ. In flaming fire, for those who know not God and obey not the gospel, what is the situation? If you don't obey the gospel, if you don't know God, then flaming fire, verse 9. On them who shall be, God, who shall be, who shall be punished uh -huh. with everlasting destruction from the presence of the Lord and That's from what, the glory of his God. That's what's going to happen for those who don't know God, for those who obey not the gospel. They're going to be punished for everlasting destruction. Mm -hmm. So, you know, the gospel involves life and death. The struggle of humanity is in the gospel. Mm -hmm. It will directly affect our eternity. Amen. Yeah. So if I summarize the gospel, I may not have time to go through it, but I want to summarize the gospel, the old time gospel. There are certain facts, 
to believe. There are certain commands to obey. And after you obey that, there are promises to receive. Mm -hmm. You see, I have to understand, one fact I must believe is that Jesus Christ was crucified for our sins. Mm -hmm. In 1 Corinthians 15, 1 through 3, what does it say? Moreover, brethren, Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you, I declare unto you the, the gospel, the which, gospel I unto you, which I preached unto you, which also you have, which received, also you have received, and wherein you stand, and that's where you stand. Read by which also, by which also you are saved. That's how you're saved. You read, you understand, you're standing, and you're saved. Yeah. Read. If you keep in memory if, what I preached unto you. If you keep in memory yeah. what I have preached unto you. Unless you have believed in vain. Okay, now that's what it all boils down to. You can't be faithful because maybe you don't believe. Mm -hmm. yeah. Maybe you're believing in vain. But you're going to have to believe a few things. Yes, sir. He's got to deliver unto you, first of all, which I've also received in Christ, what? Died. Died for our sins. Yes. According to the scripture. You're going to believe Jesus was crucified. The old time gospel foretold in the Old Testament scripture in Isaiah 53, four through six. And there it says, surely he have borne our griefs and carried our sorrows. Mm -hmm. Yet we did esteem him stricken, smitten of God and afflicted. He was wounded for our transgressions. He was bruised for our iniquities. The chastisement of our peace was upon him with his stripes. We are healed all we like sheep have gone astray mm -hmm. and we have turned everyone to his own way and the Lord have laid on him the iniquities of us all. Yes, sir. See when you think about God and what he had brought Jesus to do, the gospel has a purpose. Yes, mm -hmm. The purpose was a total sacrifice for sins. Mm -hmm. The gospel intent was one takes on the sins and issues of others. Yes, sir. And the gospel victory, through one person, we might all have life. Yeah. That's the victory. The old time gospel. The gospel itself, why do we want to have gospel revival meetings? Because that's the only way men can understand what God's intention is for them to be saved. To be saved. The gospel and understanding the gospel of God. Yeah. We need to ask for the old way. We need to stand. And when we don't know how to get there, we need to ask somebody. Yes, Where is the good way? Where is the right way? Where is the old path? Mm -hmm. And we need to stay therein. We can talk more about that. We'll do that after the meeting. But the bottom line is this. We need to commit. Yes. Commit to promoting the gospel. Let me tell you something. Maybe you can't teach the gospel. Maybe you're not fluent or maybe you don't have the ability, but guess what? We're bringing somebody to do that. And all we need to do is bring somebody to hear what he's got to say. He's gonna talk from the Bible. He's gonna teach you from New Testament teaching. And he's gonna try to encourage us to be better than what we have been before, than we have been in the past. This is our time. This is our time yes. to be committed. I know we got a lot of folks out of pocket. They'll be back by next week. Hey, let's be here next week. Yeah. Let's commit to all five days. Let's bring visitors so that we can try to share the word with somebody because the gospel still saves today. Yeah. Still saves today. Yeah. Go into the world and preach the gospel. He that believeth that is baptized the same shall be saved. Yeah. He that believeth not shall be damned. I'm telling you right now, I'm going to try to avoid that damn nation. Yeah, yeah, I'm going to try to avoid that by trying to obey God. If you're a Christian today, you know you haven't been living right, I'm tell you something. We haven't seen you in a month of Sundays. In a month of Sundays. I'm tell you something, God's not dumb and he's not silly. He understands where you been. That's just one aspect of commitment. Coming. But I'll tell you this right now, and Brother Lewis will agree. If you don't come, then you haven't been doing a whole lot of things. That's just the first thing. 
I guarantee you, Brother, Brother Stevenson back there will tell you, if you haven't come, you haven't gave. Hey, that's just, that just simple. You wasn't here to give. If you didn't come, you couldn't support. If you didn't come, you couldn't pray. If you didn't come, you weren't around. All I'm saying is that if you're messing up in one thing, let's commit to do better. Let's commit to do better than what we have done in the past. I've been slowful. I was backslidden. I wasn't going to church. I'm not proud of it. I lied to my daddy. My daddy would call and say, you've been to service. I told him, yes, I had. <laughs> I wasn't going to tell him I wasn't going to church. What does that make? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. Yeah, it was in service. He didn't ask me what the preacher said. He didn't say what kind of lesson was taught. Because I've been doing more lying. Because I had to develop something. But the bottom line is that I was backslidden and I was away from God. And until you get back with God, you can't get God's blessing. Yeah, yeah I was starving to death, but I was uh, pillar to post and here and there and up and down. But guess what? Until I decided to start obeying God, guess what? My life wasn't going to change. And it didn't change. And I'm telling you right now, get with God. That's where your blessings are. And if you know you haven't been doing right, you need to come on down and get it right with God. What's the song invitation? Prepare to meet that God. God. That's a great song. And it starts off some about some careless souls. A careless soul is one who does not is not concerned about his soul. I'll tell you right now, get your life right with God. Don't waste any time. Get on board and let's get right and do what God wants us to do. Amen. Some of us know we need to be there. We need this opportunity to get it right with God. Ask somebody to pray for you. James 5, 16, the effectual fervent prayer of righteous people, merchants man, availeth much. We'll pray for you. Ask somebody, repent of your sins, Luke 13, 3 and 5, Acts 17 and 30. Let the sin go and get back on track with God. And if you are not a Christian, you're going to have to hear the word of God. We already read 1 Corinthians 15. 1 through 3, and when you read 1 through 4, it's the whole gospel. Lived, he died, and rose again. That's the gospel. That's the same teaching Jesus wants us to have. So we can be, so we can be free and not be damned. So I'm asking you right now, if you want to be a member of the church, hear the word of God and believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. Confess that Jesus Christ is the Son of God before men. Be willing to be baptized for missing your sin. Uh, first uh, Peter 3, 20 and 21, because baptism doth now save us. Romans 6, 3 through 4, bury with him in the likeness of your, his death, raised in the likeness of his resurrection. Yeah. That's what we're trying to get to. Yeah. Baptism, Acts 2, 38. Why? The remission of sins. Mm -hmm. And then God will give you the gift of the Holy Spirit. Don't be careless today. Yeah. Don't be careless. But let's respond immediately. Let's get our lives right. Let's get on board. Amen. Let's get on board right now as together we stand and sing. Careless soul.